Welcome into another video in my series where we're going through and testing all the weapons inside of MW3 to see how viable these weapons are for us to be using inside of our Modern Warfare 3 Zombies games. This is going to include the aftermarket parts, the aftermarket conversion kits, as well as the MW2 weapons. So if you're new around here and you'd like to see how weapons perform inside of Call of Duty Zombies, make sure you subscribe, turn on those bell notifications because you are definitely in the right place. As well, down below in the description, you will find the link for my streams, and I stream on Mondays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I stream everything from MW3 Zombies all the way through to custom zombie maps and genuinely have a ton of fun over there and would love to see you all come and hang out. Now in today's video, before we dive into the review things, I definitely wanted to mention that we are very, very close. Now under 200 subscribers away from the channel's fourth Black Ops 6 giveaway. And this one is gonna be a vault edition on any platform of your choice. So in order to be qualified for the giveaway, you need to be liking, commenting, and of course, be subscribed to the channel. Now with the amazing channel growth and the fact that we are almost at 5,000 subscribers, the Z Horde community is also growing at an alarming rate and we are so very close to hitting 600 members inside of the Discord full of people willing to help out other players inside of Zombies Games. Absolutely amazing community. If that's something you're interested in, the link for that is in the description down below. Now I am thoroughly enjoying Season 6 so far, so let me know what your thoughts on Season 6 are so far in the comments section below. And with the changes that they've done in the patch notes for Season 6, they went and made a bunch of changes to the NW2 weapons. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the M13C. We're going to be taking that through all three tiers, taking on bounty contracts all the way through. So hopefully by the end of the video, you have a really good feel for how the M13C performs inside of Zombies. And by the end of the video, after I exfil from the Dark Aether, you should be able to make up your mind on whether or not this is a viable weapon for you to be running inside of your MW3 Zombies games. So without further ado, let's dive into the M13 review video today. Welcome into today's video. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I truly do appreciate that. Now, I've really enjoyed the Season 6 patch notes and the changes and uh, buffs that they have made across a numerous number of weapons inside of our game. So I'm super excited to go through and test all the changes that they made to these weapons. So today is another one that received a big time buff. So we're gonna be looking at the M13C from MW2. Are we taking that through all three tiers, taking on bounty contracts all the way through. Now, if you're new to my channel, when I spawn in and do weapon testing videos here, we go and grab our first bounty contract inside of tier one, and I throw on all of my perks with the only addition for adding any damage to the base weapon would be running Deadshot Daiquiri. I run that every game. I like the extra critical damage that it does provide. So we pick up our first bounty contract of the day. It's a Mangler. So we're gonna hop in our ATV and make our way over. I don't even know if that's an ATV. It's an off-road vehicle of some sort. Make our way over to our first bounty contract of the day, which was a Mangler. Now I can tell uh, usually just, you know, if this is gonna be decent, depending on how quick I'm able to take uh, the Mangler's cannon uh, when he's firing it and just kind of destroy it. So to see how well this was performing already against our first bounty contract of the day inside of tier one. I was really, really, really impressed with uh, just the damage output and how strong this weapon was in inside of tier one. We were able to dish out the damage to our first bounty contract right here inside of tier one. Uh, now you do have 45 rounds in the biggest magazine. So stick through the video as we do uh, see how this performs later on with mags of holding. So seeing how it was against our first bounty contract of the day, doing incredibly well with the buff that this received for season six, it was time to visit the pack-a-punch machine. Melee it, wait for the center of the pack-a-punch machine to turn green, and then you can use your pack-a-punch crystal like I just did, or use the pack-a-punch machine to keep your camo on your weapon for the rest of the run. So, time to grab our second bounty contract inside of Tier 1, and this one we're taking on with just Pack-a-Punch on the white rarity base variant of uh, the M13C. And I was really impressed with, so far, uh, a lot of the weapons from MW2 have received um, buffs to make them a little bit less bouncy and a little bit less jumpy on the visual recoil when using uh, the MW2 weapon. So that was something I was really eager to see as I found overall as a whole 
the MW2 weapons had a lot of visual recoil on uh, on each of them. So this was a nice, uh, definitely a nice uh, buff to see. So it was time to have some fun with our final bounty contract inside of Tier 1. Get incredibly overpowered being Pack-a-Punch Legendary with our Ammo Mod Shatter Blast on this weapon and make our way over and pick up our last bounty contract of the day inside of Tier 1. And we got a Mangler. So I was kind of eager to see how this would uh, perform and how quick we could get rid of this Mangler bounty contract inside of Tier 1. So, uh, hey, how's it going there, bud? Come on over. Uh, yeah, no, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I love these contracts. That you're so overpowered inside of Tier 1 to be doing those. So, you know, seeing how this has been performing across all of our bounties inside of Tier 1, I was eager to push into Tier 2 and grab a bounty contract without upping the damage output at all on this uh, weapon and seeing, you know, how is it going to handle. Now we've got a Tier 2 bounty contract, a Disciple, my least favorite bounty contract in the game. But this one today was being inc incredibly cooperative and just kind of staying around in the area uh, for me to shoot, which was absolutely awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I did throw a decoy uh, right when I got up here to kind of distract all the riffraff around. Now here, I almost died being overconfident that I'd be able to finish off the disciple. And when he dies, all of these zombies would die. And I, ju <laughs> I just about took it down there. I thought I'd be able to finish off the disciple while they were hitting me. Um, but th that didn't happen, so we almost died. Um, but we got, uh, you know, a perk out of the deal, which wasn't too bad. Quick revive and a medium bag, which I didn't need, so we dropped those off. And now it's time for my favorite part to turn into a mobile pack punch machine. I whipped out the machine out of my pocket, and we put on PAP 2. So now it was time to find a second bounty contract inside of Tier 2, feeling incredibly confident using this weapon, and uh, I wanted to see what it was going to be like now that we have Pack-a-Punch Level 2 on it with Legendary and our Ammo Mod. It performed incredibly well against our first bounty contract inside of Tier 1, the dis or Tier 2, sorry, the Disciple. So I was kind of eager to see what it would do against this Mangler now inside of Tier 2, in that we have increased the damage damage output a little bit so I put a couple shots into our mangler to get his attention and then just instant deleted the cannon which was incredibly encouraging to see and then we reloaded and just about just completely evaporated that mangler right there that was awesome this is definitely incredibly strong with the buffs that they've made for it for season six so seeing how it was performing so far I wanted to dive into tier three make sure we stopped at the Der Wonder Fizz machine so we can grab the rest of our perks as I like to run inside a tier three with a perkaholic so that I don't have to worry about anything so we dropped a decoy into the Wonder Fizz machine, grabbed the last four perks that we were missing. Did pretty well today before getting into tier three for perks. Four isn't too bad. The other day we did, uh, I got in here and I only needed two more perks. So I was definitely really impressed with that run. Now, here we are into tier three. Uh, I'm still pack a bunch level two with my ammo mod on. And I just kind of wanted to see, I know there's going to be a few zombies coming to me from the Wonder Fizz and making their way over as my decoy has finished. I was also curious to see just how many um, bites it takes for the dog to take out a zombie in tier three. Three, apparently, good to know. But I could, still, I could tell already just from these zombies, few zombies that were here that at uh, pack level two inside of tier three, this was definitely gonna be something that we could run. Um, I was feeling really confident with it. So I was curious to see how it would perform at crowd control uh, in tier three being only pack two we had you know a couple zombies here and there and uh, when we first tried it and tax stance definitely helps with your recoil um, so i would highly recommend if you you know struggle getting in the critical shots or you just don't like dealing with the recoil the visual recoil tax stance will virtually remove it for you as you can see in the footage right here and the damage output at pap two inside of tier three was definitely remarkable i was i was really impressed with the damage output so we have one thing left to do take it to max damage output and eliminate the need for reloading by throwing on mags of holding now tier three when i got in today was incredibly busy people were uh using scorchers to fly around and grab contracts so i wasn't sure um if i was even going to be able to grab a contract inside of tier three to show you all but this weapon at max damage output inside of tier three will handle crowd control without an issue. I was having no problems at all handling any of the crowd control right there. So it was time to show our good friend, 
George, the Garden of the Arches. And I have to say, the comment section from yesterday's video, you all are bound and determined for me to continue my testing with George, the Garden of the Arches. I have heard you loud and clear. We will continue testing with George going forward. Now, I was excited because this was really performing well um, inside of Tier 3, dealing with crowd control, dealing with just about anything that was coming my way. So I was really eager to see what it was going to be able to do to a Mega Abomination inside of Tier 3. You know, at max damage output, we don't have to reload. We got mags are holding on. And the critical damage that this is able to dish out when you get the critical shots on Mega Abominations, your zombies, standard HPTs, anything really in the game across Tier 3, you're going to be able to handle with this, this assault rifle, definitely. I was really, really impressed with just how strong this is and how well it is able to handle crowd control and just, you know, everything that comes at you inside of Tier 3. We've got a whole bunch of everything, dogs, armored zombies, sprinters, just pushing forward right here, and I'm able to kind of just stand here, just dish out the damage, and at the end of it, with my energy mine ready to go, I'm able to just push forward through that entire crowd control inside of Tier 3, which was awesome to see. Love to see it when they make changes two weapons uh, you know and buff them to make them a little bit more viable i don't necessarily enjoy when they make insane crazy buffs when uh the weapons are in just insanely overpowered uh I'm not saying anything about the incendiary rounds here at all definitely not <laughs> uh, so you know the the minor buffs uh that they had made in for season six i was definitely eager to get through and and show you guys how these weapons perform because they with the changes they made and the buffs, the buffs they made in season six to a lot of the weapons from MW2, um, they're they're definitely a lot more viable for us to be using inside of our zombies games. I mean, we just took out an HVT disciple like right there, like it was just no issue at all, uh, feeling no stress handling any of that stuff right now using this weapon, which is you know awesome. I love the fact that they're still uh, making some changes and. Uh, you know, working to have uh, that balance inside of our Zombies game. As we know, for Season 6, there was nothing uh, for Zombies content aside from the uh, half of the cooldown time on all of our schematics and no longer needing a sigil to get into the normal el uh, Dark Ethers. You still need your Elder Sigils to get into the Elder Dark Ethers. So you definitely going to want to keep those if you have a bunch in your bag and you're wanting to maybe destroy them for Season 6. Uh, you're still going to need the elders to get into that. But, I mean, you can see the critical damage right here. We're able to dish out to George. It's just absolutely remarkable with this. So, definitely, so far, I would have to say this is going to be a viable option to be running inside of all tiers uh, in the standard map. So, Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, definitely not a problem. I was able to handle everything that came my way using this today inside of all three tiers without an issue. I wasn't ever really concerned about not being able to dish out enough damage as well the movement is is really good um i was enjoying the movement with it so with no sigil needed it was time to dive into the season two dark ether again i picked season two just kind of for no particular reason just to show you how the weapon performs inside of a dark ether uh, for the most part, I'm picking Season 2 so I don't have to come in with a VR-11 so I can complete all three contracts for you. So that's why we're here in Season 2 inside of the Dark Ether. We picked up our first bounty contract, uh, which was the uh, Mangler bounty. And this, look at the damage. We're just dishing out a boatload of damage to a bounty contract inside of the Season 2 Dark Ether. I was really impressed with just how viable this was to be using against the bounty contract inside of the dark ether like wow and that's impressive like this is a lot of damage i'm dishing out and i was feeling incredibly confident uh using this weapon um, i did run out of ammo a couple times inside of the dark ether so i wanted to point that out it does have a decent amount of ammo um, but it seems to go through it fairly quickly. That was one thing I noticed in my gameplay. So if you've used this um, and you found that issue, just kind of let me know. And if not, then uh, let me know that in the comments too. Love to hear your feedback on that. But I mean, we finished off our Mangler Bounty Contract inside of the Season 2 Dark Ether right there. And I really wasn't having much of a struggle at all. Like I said, the only problem I really had during that bounty contract was uh, to dip off and go grab uh, ammo, mostly for decoys, but I did run out of ammo. I wanted to point that out during that fight. Now I brought in three sentry turrets with myself uh, during this uh, run today to be prepared. And uh, I placed them all of them outside of the uh, PND contract. Now this contract today for not being an elder was just 
absolutely insanely busy. Um, I've completed this BND contract in a regular Dark Ether a, a number of times, more than I can count, and it, it's never really felt this crazy. This felt like an Elder PND uh, today. It was it was insane. At one point, I was trying to mantle over and back through the countertops like I do to try and get the zombies to kind of group up. And uh, I just took it down. I was not able to get uh, over the countertop fast enough. It was right there. I couldn't believe how fast I, my health got down. Of course, I didn't bring in golden armor plates, so I definitely had an issue with dealing with plates. But I mean, we just took out that disciple. I got up and just totally shredded that disciple inside of the season two dark ether. So that's awesome to see that we can take out HVTs that quickly um, with this, with the changes made to this for season six. So that's definitely a plus and uh, something that is you know awesome as you all know i love having multiple weapons that we can use inside of our games i don't like being stuck to just one or two weapons that are the only option to you know be able to get through the dark ethers and stuff like that so having multiple you know viable options for us to run for weapons is nice because everybody's got a different play style people prefer, prefer different weapon classes uh so I, I love the fact that there's definitely a ton of different options to use inside of mwz so that begs the question then for all of you, which class is your favorite class of weapons to be using inside of MWZ Zombies? For me, it's gonna be assault rifles or SMGs are definitely my favorite. Uh, my favorite weapon to be using currently inside of this game is the MW crossbow with the blast caps. 100% uh, that's my favorite weapon. So we finished the PND contract there. We got mags of holding and a couple epic tools, which was good. And it was time to get ourselves equipped with our Kazmir grenades to go off and complete the final contract inside of the season two dark ether the um ether extractor contract so as i always do place the uh, casimir right beside the ether extractor use the phone and complete that while the casimir covers me now this one here for some reason always seems to have an just absolute um, um, insane amount of zombies in the area i took it down um, but i wasn't too concerned about it i know i had a few extra selfies so I just got back up and went straight to the phone uh, to try and take advantage of the tail end of my Casimir, and I was definitely able to use that to my advantage. And so we finished off that second um, ether extractor right here. Now we've got our third one to go, and I'm throwing um, thermites behind me so I can get some XP from zombies that are running over it to finish charging my energy mine, which I'm going to make a big loop here to come back over to the ether extractor machine. And we're going to be using the energy mine to kind of cover me from behind so that I can go ahead and activate that. Now we do have a minute 30 left before uh, we will fail the third and final bounty contract. So I, or contract, sorry, I should say, not bounty. Um, so I threw out a decoy out to the side there. I picked one off from one of the zombies, dropped the energy mine in behind me and straight to the phone. Didn't pick up right away, it's not a worry. Just disengage and then re-engage to the phone and just keep engaged the whole time. You will complete it right there. So that was the third and final ether extractor complete, done inside of the season two dark ether. It was time to head over and check out our rewards really quickly. Mags of holding and an elder, which is amazing. I'll use that to help out members inside of the Z Horde community discord. So overall, uh, my thoughts and feelings on the M13C with the changes made for season six in, inside of our MW3 zombies game mode, definitely a 100% viable weapon for us to be using across all three tiers and inside of the dark ether truly had a ton of fun using this today inside of my games and we made it out with some absolutely amazing loot i was really happy to see all of those mags of holding definitely awesome so this was the build that i used for the video today so if you want to make any changes to the to the build let's work together in the comment section down below so that we all have one amazing build to be using inside of our mw3 zombies game mode as well if you are new to the channel make sure you are subscribed leaving a like and a comment on the videos as that is your best chance to be getting into our fourth black ops 6 giveaway which is going to be a vault edition on any platform of your choice so make sure you get in those comments and make sure you are subscribed so we showed you the build we showed you the camo that we're using which came from one of the base camos unlocked by leveling up the new lmg and this is the blueprint that i was running on the m13c today thank you everybody so very much for tuning in i really do appreciate that and we will catch you in the next one